Hey guys, today is Shantae Brown Sugar Talks under Black Unicorns. Um, man, yesterday was like such a bad day for me because one of the teachers from the old school came on my account. And I always say this, do not, do not mention God to me. Especially when you know yourself that you are a dishonest person. Do not come to me as like no old church lady. So, you know, one day I was criticizing Ice Cube for the scene where he had the ladies at the, and they was from a church. He was like, yeah, y'all some hoes. I did not know that older women could be so mean and distraught and just evil. And so the men are too. And it's because they grew up in a different time. So in a different time where they are okay with sexual freedom, but they see it as like something derogatory, like everybody got to be a hoe and, you know, masturbation, not good. Don't look at the porn. Don't, you know, you know what I'm saying? It's like all kinds of stuff where don't wear panties, but then don't go out and fuck everybody. Only fucking when you need to buy your baby some school clothes, you know, just stupid shit. So I, it's like, I just wanted to make it clear don't bring your old ugly ass on my page to say nothing to me because they knew y'all they knew that these people that something was going on and instead of somebody actually being like hey maybe we don't know her you know maybe we don't need to continue to do anything to this person we don't know her i don't even know what the whole issue i don't know what the issue was none of it i have no clue but what I'm saying is, it's like, it had to be something where it was like the old school against the new school. Baby, let me tell you, I'm not into none of it. I guess it was like some kind of whatever. They Maybe they saw my scores. I got my scores between 2007 and 2010. And at the time, um, I was able to get those scores because I worked hard with my students. And we stayed in school uh, extra hours. So, and even with that being said... Even if we would have stayed in school the regular time, they still they would have still got them. I'm going to tell you why. I had a classroom that was determined to succeed. I had a classroom that did not slack off. I had a classroom that cared. And the only reason they could do that is because I made it important to them. So when we couldn't get something, we would close the door and we would figure it out. I, I created think tanks. Like, let's get it right. Right? Not to say that it was like all about testing or whatever. We I didn't make it about testing. We made it about how do we figure out the problem? What is the process? How do we get the answer? And I mean, somebody else could look back and be like, wait a minute, it was all about, it wasn't about testing. Not only that, it was about life lessons. It was like, oh my God, we learned this fact about science. Oh my God, we learned about this person in history. We didn't do a lot of history and we didn't do a lot of writing because I don't like, I wasn't a big history person. I wasn't a big writing person and I enjoy music. And so I use that to my advantage. I enjoy doing art. I use that to my advantage. I created a room where it was a family for me and for them too. I also made sure that I would create a system with their home. So I would often be on the phone with their parents saying, can I fake, can I write your name so I can get the points for whatever? Can I do this for you because so I can do this? Not in some kind of evil way. Not in some kind of way to steal money from them, to mess up their check, and account, nothing. It was all so we can get free stuff from some kind of subscription. I don't know. What is highlights? Okay. All of this. Right? So that we can get free items that come from highlights. Just so we can have a classroom where we had toys and we had fun and we created stupid games on how to finish work. Because sometimes it got to be too much work. Sometimes I didn't get them homework and the parents got mad about it. But I would, I would stand up there and take up for them. I had classrooms where everybody got in trouble. If one person got in trouble, everybody got in trouble. You know why? Because I wanted to create a system where they would actually take up for the other person. And that's exactly what they did. So everything I did, it had a point to it. But instead, I got y'all got so boggled down with becoming my enemy. Y'all got so boggled down with trying to fight me. You got so boggled down about some numbers that you forgot to take care of the students. You forgot to take care of the parents. You forgot to create a, a a form in your classroom that was that was okay for your spirit.
And so that's exactly why I think I walked out one day. One day I just felt like somebody is trying to force me into becoming them. Somebody wants to force me into running down a checklist about how I'm going to be a teacher. And I'm just not that kind of teacher. I never will be. I cannot change something about myself that I don't have in myself. I'm not about to go in here like I'm in the 19 fucking fifties and make my kids do, um, crazy root. You know what I'm saying? It's like, that's not what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to create students that know how to think that students that create things, students that where it's like, okay, well now what do you see? What's the problem? What happened? Can you help me fix it? That's what I was trying to create. Instead, again, like I said, it was like all these people, all these women who wanted to be me too, who wanted to be my enemy. And for what? I don't know. That's why I say do not. Do not. Y'all going to leave y'all toxicity out of my fucking life. I done told y'all don't remind me about no incompetence. Don't remind me about people who don't really care about me. Y'all sat there and saw me go through the anxiety attacks. You knew that I had a nervous breakdown. You decided to then tell me as a principal that I need to go to. And actually, I actually needed to. Like, I need to go get counseling or whatever. Call the counselor. Like, y'all knew all that stuff about me. And y'all still intended on creating these situations for me to feel inadequate. Feel like you were using my disability against me. To feel like, um, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, like what I was doing wasn't where it was supposed to be. Which really you didn't. That part, no, you could never. But the thing was, it's just like me as a human being now, knowing that I have a disability and knowing why I got the disability. Nothing was done to help me, prepare me, anything for what, for the criticism and all the, the hatred that y'all showed me. Over nothing. Over some scores from 2007 and 2010. Through 2010, right? And so it's like, I don't know what else to say to you. Y'all knew. You knew these people weren't no good. And y'all continuously kept doing the same thing. You guys had a record of. You had people that actually witnessed it. That wrote it down. I actually had a nervous breakdown because I was raped in college. And I truly thought people were following me. And y'all used that to intendedly to hurt me as women, a group of women, a group of women who actually have our children's futures in their hands decided to do this. That's what y'all decided to do. And I'm out here trying to make it better so that your kids don't have to go through what I went through. You mean to tell me that you're going to put your kid in a nice neighborhood? You're going to help your kid travel. And even if they're not, you're going to help your kid travel. You're going to make sure that your kid use, goes and sees all these different people and learns and knows how to speak to people and is building things for themselves and making things better for themselves only to have somebody come back in their face and tell them that they a hoe. Your daughter ain't done nothing. But walk onto a campus. But now she's officially a hoe. Then they gonna make sure she a hoe. They gonna trap her and rape her. But that's what you want for your kids, right? Instead of us recognizing that that was a problem. Instead, y'all wanted to do the same thing to me again. The same exact thing. No changes in the story. Just the same exact thing. You're not good enough to be. You didn't went to school. You didn't study. You have all the credentials that you need. And somebody, you're not good enough for this. You're not good enough for that. And you still a hoe. You ain't with your baby daddy. You a hoe. Right? You had all these late night conversations on the phone with men. And they recorded you. You a hoe. You cook dinner for your child. You a hoe. 
You made sure your son was safe. You a hoe. You went to go buy groceries at the grocery store? Bitch, you a hoe. You studied in college? You a hoe. You could have graduated in three years? You a hoe. You took a bath today, bitch? You a hoe. Everything, you a hoe. So you mean to tell me that I was supposed to look at myself every day and just realize that I'm a hoe for trying to keep myself safe, keep my son safe and establish a life for me where I didn't have to go back to poverty. Every time y'all said I was a hoe, let me read her right. Oh my gosh, she diabolical and she's still a hoe. She can't write. We can't give her the opportunity. We going to pass this on to somebody else because they could be better. Because she just a hoe. So you will build everything for your child. Everything for your child. And either they going to be a thug or a hoe. And then you going to sit up there and get them to get, get, give time for people to believe it. You going to give air to it. Breath to it. Y'all didn't even know me. I don't know anything about y'all, but what I do know is that some black women have issues with other black women. What I do know is some black men have issues with sexuality. So then therefore they take that ugly essence and put that off on black women. Like we owe it to you. What I do know is like a lot of people of other races would like to show us all the derogatory things about their sexual life and all their fantasies and shit. And my shit ain't even nowhere close to that. I'm trying to build a safe and secure life for me and my child. Instead, y'all wanted me to feel like I was like back in the gutter. With gutter snipes. Because those are the only people that will choose to do anything to the caliber of what y'all did. And y'all waited until until I was deep into my fucking anxiety and PTSD to even pull some shit like that. All those years I had to survive on the campus with men always want to touch me and fuck me and all this different shit just because they felt like I was a hoe. And then pretend like I was another person to act like, oh, well, maybe she was the stripper. No, bitch, you knew I wasn't her. You knew it. To be raped that many times because of some damn list from a frat. To think that I was actually in true relationships with people that actually just wanted to fucking hurt me. To continuously be talk to like and talk down to like okay wait a minute what what did I do I ain't no hope I don't even know what the purpose of what y'all was doing was for the stuff was from the classroom and I've explained it so many times it was from my classroom it was from my students It was ideas and stories that my students had created. The little people that I don't want to see. And the whole time, y'all was still back there trying to make me out to be a hoe. So I guess if I am a hoe, I'm a good one. Cause ain't nobody paid for it yet. And ain't no nigga owning me over here. So. That's all I'm trying to say on this super soul Sunday. You don't know me. So don't pray for me. Pray for yourself because you knew, you knew that somebody was trying to hurt me. You knew that something was going on. 
And you did nothing about it. Nothing. You knew what I was trying to create. Y'all wanted it to be some type of challenge. When we got a whole community of kids that actually need our help. That's suffering every day. You knew. Y'all want to change it to color and separatism and, and all this different shit and it's not. It's about what you already knew. And even in that rough time, I still had people that were better, brown people that treated me better than any of you. Any of you. That took into consideration that maybe this is a good person. Maybe this person isn't who I think they are. And y'all still chose to be racist and against people. And it's just not, it's just intolerable to me. It's intolerable. I don't want your spirit in my, I don't need none of that entanglement, nothing intertwined with mine. I'm so serious because y'all hateful. And I'm not playing. I'm not joking. Don't fucking come at me smiling like we hunky dory and everybody fucking happy. I'm not singing kumbaya with you. Stay the fuck away from me.